China has made a move that is shaking the entire semiconductor world to its core. On April 12, 25, Beijing decisively cut ties with ASML and TSMC, terminating every procurement contract for ASML's lithography systems and halting all chip orders placed through TSMC by Chinese state-linked firms. At first glance, the decision looked reckless, like China was willingly giving up access to the most advanced machines and chips in existence. But the reality is that this was no rash gamble. It was a carefully prepared strike, timed for the moment when China knew it could withstand the shock. For years, the country had been quietly building the capacity to stand on its own. SMIC, China's largest chip maker, had doubled its deep ultraviolet lithography output since 2023, producing more than 300,000 wafers per month. That kind of industrial expansion is not something that happens in reaction to sudden events. It is the result of years of planning, billions in subsidies, and a deliberate push to replace foreign suppliers with domestic strength. Beijing did not sever these ties in weakness. It severed them from a position of readiness. The consequences for the West came instantly. ASML, whose extreme ultraviolet lithography machines generate nearly 70% of its profit margins, saw bookings from Asia collapse by 12% in the first quarter of 2025 alone. TSMC, the crown jewel of global semiconductor manufacturing, faces an even deeper problem. Its $100 billion expansion project in Arizona, once celebrated in Washington as a symbol of American industrial revival, now looks more like a trap. China has blacklisted all nodes beyond 7 nanometers, which means TSMC's most advanced offerings are effectively banned. What was supposed to be a showcase of cutting-edge technology has become a stranded investment, cut off from one of the largest markets in the world. But what shocked analysts most was not that China turned away. It was how well-prepared it already was for life without foreign suppliers. The seeds were planted back in 2020 when Washington imposed sweeping sanctions on Huawei. The U.S. believed it had cornered the company by cutting off access to TSMC's advanced nodes and blocking ASML's EUV technology. Many in the West thought this was the end of Huawei's ambitions. Instead, those sanctions triggered what Credit Suisse later called the most expensive forced innovation cycle in modern tech history. The results are now visible for everyone to see. Huawei struck back with the Mate 7 Pro, powered by a domestically manufactured 7 nanometer chip made without EUV, without foreign wafers, and without imported tools. SMIC pulled this off by combining deep ultraviolet lithography with self-aligned quadruple patterning, squeezing performance out of equipment the West dismissed as outdated. A teardown by Tech Insights showed that the transistor density of the chip was only 17% lower than Apple's A17 Pro. On paper, that still placed it firmly in the same class. In real-world benchmarks, especially for artificial intelligence inference, the performance was competitive. Then came the even bigger shock. In March 2025, Huawei began mass production of the Ascend 9 Tau C, a chip designed as a rival to NVIDIA's H100. The chip wasn't built on a single monolithic die like NVIDIA's design. Instead, Huawei combined two 910B dies into a 2.5D package. The result was a processor that achieved 75% of the H100's performance at roughly 55% of the cost. It wasn't perfect, but it was good enough. When Huawei released the first production batch in May, every unit was sold out within 11 days, snapped up by state-backed cloud providers and domestic AI companies. NVIDIA's forced exit from China, caused by U.S. export bans on its H100, H20, and B200 chips, had left a $7 billion vacuum. Huawei filled it immediately. This is the essence of China's new strategy. It does not need to outperform the West on every metric. It does not need to build the fastest or the most efficient chips. It needs to build chips that are good enough, at sufficient volume, and on schedule. Subsidies absorb losses, state orders guarantee demand, and defense applications ensure that resilience matters more than efficiency. What looks like a technical disadvantage through the lens of capitalist economics becomes a strategic weapon in the logic of geopolitical survival. By the second quarter of 2025, 
Over 80% of the components used in China's sub-10 nanometer production were domestically sourced. SMIC's new Megafab in Shenzhen, completed in a record 16 months, was producing more than 45,000 wafers every month. Shanghai Microelectronics achieved its first production run of lithography steppers, capable of 28 nanometer output, and set a target of 14 nanometers by 2026. The trajectory was unmistakable. Step by step, the dependency that once chained Beijing to foreign suppliers was being cut away. And then came the leak that changed everything. In February 2025, Analysts were stunned by an engineering document from China's State Key Laboratory of Laser Technology. It described a prototype EUV light source based on a method called Laser-Induced Discharge Plasma, or LDP. If real, it represented a staggering leap forward. ASML's current EUV machines rely on laser-produced plasma that vaporizes tin droplets using 50,000 laser pulses per second. This process is complex, unstable, and wasteful, converting less than 0.1% of input energy in tausable EUV light. China's proposed LDP method used a two-step approach. First, a low-power laser to ionize plasma, and then a high-current electrical discharge to sustain stable EUV emission. In laboratory tests, engineers reported efficiency rates between 0.8 and 8%, up to eight times better than ASML's current technology. The implications are enormous. ASML's machines cost 170 million or each and consume more than one megawatt of power, more energy than ASML neighborhood of homes. If China can industrialize LDP technology, not only could it cut the cost of chip production, it could also render ASML's machines obsolete. Imagine a future where Beijing, not Eindhoven, supplies the world's most advanced lithography systems. Skeptics are quick to point out that moving from a laboratory prototype to an industrial machine is a mountain of challenges. EUV lithography depends on ultra-reflective mirrors with atomic level precision, photoresists that can withstand extreme light exposure, and synchronization across etching, deposition, and inspection stages. China still struggles with calibration tools, photoresist polymers, and defect tolerances that must be measured in fractions of nanometers but the direction is clear. These are engineering problems, not impossibilities. Five years ago, experts said Huawei could never make a seven nanometer chip. Today, it already has. At the same time, the West position is beginning to look fragile. TSMC's Arizona Fab, once touted as proof of America's regained manufacturing leadership, is tightly bound by US national security directives. It no longer operates purely as a commercial enterprise, but as an extension of Washington's geopolitical strategy. ASML finds itself caught in a three-way squeeze, dependent on German optics suppliers, pressured by American political demands, and now losing access to its largest Asian customers. Even Canon has stepped into the vacuum, selling dozens of its deep ultraviolet lithography machines to Southeast Asian buyers who prefer a neutral supplier. The moat around ASML and TSMC is shrinking, not from espionage or theft, but from obsolescence and redundancy. Meanwhile, China is absorbing talent as aggressively as it is building machines. Since 2022, more than 1,500 engineers from TSMC and UMC have crossed the strait to work for mainland firms, lured by salaries more than double their previous pay. Beijing's $47 billion semiconductor fund restructured in 2024, is now focused not on global integration, but on vertical self-sufficiency. It is methodically converging every link of the semiconductor supply chain under domestic control. Unlike ASML, which relies on specialized suppliers scattered across Europe and Japan, China is building a tightly integrated ecosystem where every critical component is manufactured at home. If this momentum continues, the greatest threat to Western semiconductor dominance will not be espionage or theft. It will be irrelevance. Once China builds complete redundancy, its own tools, its own wafers, its own lithography systems, the West will lose its choke points. Sanctions will no longer bite. Market pressure will no longer work. The leverage that Washington once wielded over Beijing will evaporate.
and the stakes extend far beyond the marketplace. Every artificial intelligence breakthrough, every quantum simulation, every military targeting system of the next decade will rely on the chips at the center of this battle. Today, ASML still controls the most advanced light source in the world, but what if Beijing has already cracked the code behind closed doors? What if EUV lithography as we know it becomes obsolete? The consequences would ripple through global wealth, global warfare, and global power itself. The story is not about who makes the fastest chip today. It is about who controls the rules of the game tomorrow. And the uncomfortable truth is that the rules may no longer be written in Silicon Valley, in Taipei, or in Eindhoven. They may already be shifting to Beijing.